can sit down, chill, stand, walk around, whatever you want to do. So sometimes to learn techniques, what I like to do is not only just, you, you, you obviously got to get shown those techniques and learn those techniques, but you have to understand sometimes the history of jiu-jitsu, why we do certain things, the developments that have happened, and why we're doing them now this way. We pretty much have a reason that we're doing things uh, in jiu-jitsu. If, if you don't, then you should, you should try to assemble a path for your jiu-jitsu. I know that literally, like write it out. Have you guys ever done that? What are my favorite techniques? Write them on a paper. And how can I take those techniques and connect them? You know what I'm saying? Like, that's very important to do. Uh, some people call them a flow chart, some people call it a mind map, but it's very important to do, okay? So if Donnie gives me his back, we're just gonna talk back and control, okay? So if I'm on his back, I don't think I need to explain this much, I'm on his back, right? Crucifix is gonna be kind of on his back, but I'm on his side. And even better, I'm gonna have control of his arm. I can also have multiple controls of his arm over here, or his neck, or his hand and collar. But the cool part about this arm control over here is I can tap him. Look, hips in, yeah. and he taps. So I have an arm submission, a neck submission. There's cool little stuff I can do over here. I could also have him in like Kimura type action. There's guillotines that I can do from here, neck cranks. And then also, if Donnie ever like bridged into me, I, I always still have his back, and not only do I have his back, I have his back with arm track. It's like horrible for him, right? So it's like after doing jujitsu since the 90s, I kind of go back and forth as to what I think is better, the back position or the crucifix. I feel the crucifix is more dangerous than the back by itself, but the back, you can belly people out, you can squish them, you can ride around, you know, do a little horse drill, you know what I'm talking about, like we all do with our kids. You can't quite do that with crucifix, but they're not as mobile in crucifix. I can be on someone like I just was with Donnie, he's not gonna get up and move around as much as he could if I was just on his back. So the positional, I think, can be better for having your hooks or having the body trying to lean on the back, but having the crucifix and having the arm and the neck is better submission-wise, because you have them under double attack. It's got to think about two things, arm defense and neck, okay? So let's, let's just go super easy from turtle, okay? Back up some here, buddy. So, usually when I take the back, turns out. Usually when I take the back regularly, I'm gonna stick my knee in between the knee and the elbow. I have my other leg up. I'm seat belting and I'm pulling him at a 45 degree angle over his shoulder in order to take his back. When I want a crucifix, these guys are switched. I'm here like this. Uh, I heard you say you were judo, and you guys have taught judo, so this is gonna be familiar for some of you guys. This is the start of my clock choking. This is the start of all that kind of stuff that's gonna happen from here. You land here a lot from some, uh, people failing throws and stuff. So number one, let's just start seatbelt, okay? So I'm just gonna seatbelt. Anytime I seatbelt, the hand that is going around the neck is on bottom. Hand that's going around the neck is on bottom. It's important so I don't go like this, and then, because I get, sit up for me, I know we're here with beginners. If I, if I grab, like this, and he grabs my top hand, well now he's got my freaking choking hand. If I grab like this and he grabs my top hand, he strips it, I've got the top hand to choke, or underneath hand to choke. So anytime we grab around the neck, on a seatbelt on the back, I tend to grab this hand, it's gonna cover it, okay? So my knee is in, my knee is in to the point where my hips touch him. I'm not away from I'm like this, and I'm making him carry my weight. So don't be, it's really easy to be on my knee, and only be on my knee. Donnie moves around, he gets his underhook back. You know, I start running into trouble, you know what I'm saying? So I put weight on his elbows, his knees, I make him less mobile just by riding his hip. My elbow's digging into his lower back and his hip. My hips are riding his hip. I'm seat belted on him now like this. He's feeling my weight, okay? So the other thing that I can do here is if his elbow's in, just look what I'm doing with my elbow. My knee goes in, and then look at this, out. So they're not really over exaggerating, but basically it'll, it'll separate his arm. Right? And here, slide my knee out a little bit. Hook and put my knee down. Don't worry about which way his arm. I can't control if Donnie goes like that. There's thing, it's not, it's not the end of the world. Let's just start basic here like this. Okay? I've got seatbelt. I'm gonna go to a double wrist grip now. And when I go wrist, I'm going palm and wrist, and then wrist. 
So this does a couple things for me. I can pull him backwards real hard. Now I got this bar that's his forearm that I can literally plant on my feet and I can pull him backwards. Okay, I'm literally pulling his, pulling his arm through his chest. Seat belt, catch the leg, foot's down. I go double wrist control. Now that his elbow's in, he no longer has that post. That's all I'm talking about. Is that you? They're like, this guy needs to shut up. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so look, now that I pulled his wrist in, he has no base over here. I can let go with one hand, look the opposite direction, and I easily roll over, rear grab, and now I'm on the crucifix. Same position. So I've either gone forward or backwards. Spin a little bit. Forward. Wrist grab. Pull it to his body. Literally get on your feet. See how I'm on my feet? Feet will be close together and I'll push backwards and I end up on the back. My ear is still going to be between his head and the mat. The next one, I'm going to shoulder roll him. Okay, pull his wrist in. Now he's got no post. I will take my, my neck hand out, post on the mat, look the opposite direction towards the arm. And I can literally roll. What, what's really going to roll him over is me pulling his arm with my leg. Go back to the wrist grab, and then I'm up. Those two entrances are super simple. It'll get us kick started. Does that make sense? Yes. So do two. Do one, the other, and then switch. One, the other, and then switch. You need to see it again. You okay? I know here's the one, two, three is different. Ready? One, two, three.